Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. At first, Megan thought that she was brilliant yet then showed up the sensational news hunters for sucker led them to accept that. Megan exposes her weakness as the pursuit of money. However, the important thing is that you are here and reading this, even if it only takes up a fraction of your time. Would appreciate if you would like and subscribe to my content. Support is very much appreciated. But get back to this main topic. So, the question remains what do you think is really behind Oprah Winfrey's interview with Meghan Markle? Why do you think that is the best way for Meghan and Harry to raise their profile by sitting in complete contradiction of your sense-blasting royals? To call it an interview is a pretty long jump since Oprah did not push back on any claim made by the couple or ask anything uncomfortable. This might have diluted the debate. Oprah seems to have needed this as much or more than they did. It was an interminable circus. After all, in Meghan's world. I'm wrong and a racist if I disagree. What that Oprah Winfrey interview seemed to achieve is likely something we'll never know. But Meghan said she felt betrayed by royal staff or family members. When it comes to being honest, however, she stops herself from calling anyone out. So what was the point of her statements then? Such was the lie Meghan Markle told about her wedding day to Prince Harry that even the Archbishop of Canterbury felt compelled to respond with a public correction. While this fabrication caused no harm to the royal family, it merely underlined what was already common knowledge. I actually feel sorry for Meghan, who from my limited impression is a confused and troubled woman. It is a boot camp from straightening her curly afro hair to marking off Caucasian on the forms because she knew White was in charge, they were all there. However, several childhood photos of her show a very different side to Fern. She uses emotional regulation and victim mindset, twisting anything possible to be a truth we are far brighter than her mythiming us. I doubt she will ever know the extent of her wrongdoing, perhaps someday. That frustration made me consider, does Meghan not have critically? Costing the British taxpayers, it was the priciest royal wedding of all time. This was not a gesture of thanks for her adopting British customs. Breaking protocol, she went so scandalous as to wear green on Commonwealth Day reportedly irritating the Queen. Chloe at another time did not properly wear tights or cross her legs and this could be accused of lack of respect for fathom norms. Jessica Mulroney slash Instagram Mulroney it seems the officials would have needed to step in pre-marriage, especially if Meghan truly did feel untouchable. She showed her willingness to thumb his nose at tradition, flouting the royal dress code by issuing tights and avoided crossing her legs as she posed. Responsibility for this deviation from protocol was entirely placed upon Meghan, and the claim made that Prince Harry did not know how to properly navigate her. Although they had help understanding the rules, Meghan seemed determined to break them much to the chagrin of the firm. Harry was notoriously passive in helping guide his wife through the royal protocols he overlooked an excellent chance to defend her, especially in light of what his own mother, Princess Diana had gone through. Now, the absence of proactive participation on Harry's part would indicate a degree of self-absorption had permitted Meghan to overreach within the royal household. Victoria recounted how Catherine and her daughter attended some wedding fittings, where they witnessed Meghan laying down the law. Meghan had a tantrum about one crown and the queen stepped in. Wearing white or off-white has now also become a wedding tradition in contemporary times, so the symbolism of white is less important. Given that white attire symbolizes new beginnings or rebirth, a concept quite fitting for the renewal of life in marriage, one has to question why people are chomping at the bit over what shade Meghan's dress will be when everyone from Catherine all the way down Beatrice and Eugenie have worn versions of frosted garb on their big days without issue. In saying nothing about naming these two individuals, the royal family has shown admirable restraint. Which appears rather redundant given that Harry and Meghan are about to end in their own slow-motion self-immolation. Maybe the problem is somewhere with Harry who got two previous marriage proposals declined. There must be well-founded explanations for it. 
it could have been the demands of royal life, maybe it was Harry himself when he met Meghan Markle. A friend claimed Prince William advised Harry to slow down and spend more time getting accustomed with Meghan before going further, but he did not take the advice. This is making the matter a tad weird and probable lie by Harry. Apparently, he proposed to Meghan over a chicken dinner even though she was vegan, of course. Of course, the wedding event also brings another side of Meghan whom have gained introduction towards. A divorced woman who wears white on her second wedding in a church, and then follows it with an overtly American style, inappropriately large by British standards, extravaganza clearly has no respect for the people of this nation especially when their wedding was grander that Prince William's. Even more strangely, they bring out the occasional Hollywood guests we never see. Attendees probably weren't there for the pals, as much as they were one of fifty people at a wedding to royalty. Oddly, Meghan's close family members, including her husband-to-be and many other royals, were not invited making apparent the frosty relationship between Harry and Markle Sr. In contrast, Catherine's family were able to form a tight bond with Prince William and help to reintroduce him back into normal life after so many years in the media spotlight. A news item had recently come out about Meghan's relationship with her mother, like Catherine's family situation. There were also apparent differences in parental engagement. Prince George being taken to school confidently, whilst Meghan looked preoccupied on her phone, with the safety of carrying your child real question again. The troubling issues also rise with allegations of Meghan bullied royal staff, resulting in almost firings and suspicion afterwards. Meghan is blamed for the behavior of these long-serving, top-image men in her life who had no issues until now. To her they were not employees, but slaves. I am deeply embarrassed that such abuse of others was under Harry's roof. This is proven by the events of the Australian tour when it's claimed that she treated staff in a bad way and even threw hot cup of tea onto one from them. Meghan reportedly responded with expletives when the governor's wife pulled her aside to address this situation. Do you recognize me? I get the impression Meghan still thinks of from what is recounted in history where the royal family was this all-powerful entity whose wish was everyone else command. Meghan is biting off way a more than she can chew. If there is one step Meghan did not stumble on when speaking with Oprah, would this be it? It was truly malicious. So too was every word she spoke nothing but lies since the flow of words began. Those ridiculous statements about a family he is supposed to love with must have made Harry balk. When they left the royal family, they argued that this is what Hay wanted for a more tranquil life. If this is their idea of peace, there was no way I could handle chaos. I wish they just pick up their stuff and walk off into the sunset it also appears as though this was a premeditated, planned attack on the royal family's image because she knew they wouldn't stoop to such cheap levels. As she and her gullible husband perpetuate lies, playing the victims about everything, all that is coming from above and beyond are a vanilla sort in their legacy may be different BS statement with N.O. shaming nothing and carrying on as always. As soon as Harry did what he said everything I had felt right about him and all the respect for went in that split second where he just sat there. His lies has been allowed to continue, her deceptions in his book was just that more fearing immediate L.Y. followed by the shamful and the baiting with false hooded documentaries let along letting he done noting as E.T. she mocked at Queen Funnily. They were just going to buy him and all his promotional interviews that media. Fake on-air therapy The New York City car chase that everyone made a big deal of being staged fabricated incidents. I see his mother played a crucial role as though her mere existence should have enabled them to be free of criticism. Essentially I thought the interview cast a very important light on a topic. For me, the royal family has always been a symbol of stability, loyalty and continuity. The British monarchy has dated from the 10th century, and I believe Elizabeth is also a descendant of King Alfred the Great. I had never really thought how much of my belief system heavily rests upon the royal family before being interviewed. They are literally walking a part of my DNA. Internally, something clicked when Harry and his wife tried to destroy them with a bunch of incredibly malicious lies. I was consumed with an intensity that I could barely comprehend, a fierce fiery anger. My affection for the royals grew to even greater heights, 
as any attack against them left me crushed and in their defense. The vitriol I reserve for the deceitful couple. It knows no bounds. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.